National Reconstruction Authority is entrusted with identifying and reconstructing damaged houses in all 31 earthquake affected districts. What we are trying to accomplish now is to interview around a million affected households in these districts and gather the information as quickly as possible. These data would then be used for beneficiary identification, disbursement of housing assistance and tracking of the subsequent reconstruction efforts. This is a work on a huge scale. There was no way this could be accomplished within the given time using traditional pen and paper survey. The preliminary survey conducted immediately after the earthquake was done by police personnels rather than the engineers. They were the ones who assessed the damage levels of houses in the community. The current survey we are doing is much more comprehensive and is being conducted by qualified engineers. In the old days, these kinds of survey were done using pen and paper. Uh, besides being notoriously time-consuming and error-prone, there was always the risk of losing data due to accidents. Nepal was undertaking this sort of digital survey at this scale for the very first time. We did not even have basic infrastructures like tablets and servers to begin with. These and other ICT infrastructures were raided on a war footing. Since this was the first time, this was both a challenge and a huge opportunity for us. CBS managed the overall survey. Kathmandu Living Labs assisted them on the technical front. We built the mobile data collection app and trained the engineers on how to use it. We also took the responsibility of storing, managing and processing the collected data before handing it over to CBS for further processing. Raw data. Once we received the raw data on our server, our data management team at CBS checked them for consistency, duplication and quality. Once the data was clean and approved by us, we would transfer it to the FTP server which would then be used by the National Reconstruction Authority. The indicators required to identify beneficiaries are built into the information management system which generates the reports accordingly. The engineers verify these records and categorize them accordingly. We then group the recipients of the reconstruction grants on the basis of the amounts they would receive if they meet our criteria. The names of the recipients are then published in the VDC or municipal offices on the basis of which the households finally receive the grant. Some of the features we built, I would say, are innovations in some ways, and they would not have been possible without the thorough understanding of the local Nepalese context. The major challenge for us was to bring data from the districts to the data center in Kathmandu as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, most survey areas do not have reliable internet connectivity. So, first we needed an app which could work totally offline. Second, we built an option in the app that allows surveyors to upload the text data without photographs because photographs are much larger in terms of data size. The idea behind it was to enable data processing at CBS without delay. Later, surveyors would upload the remaining photographs when they had access to a better internet connection. Also, our app automatically compresses the photo size from around 5 MB to 300 KB without any visible quality degradation. This drastically shortened the data upload time and cost and saved the server storage space by almost 17 times. These are the kinds of small but crucial app features we built that made this survey the world's largest mobile survey to the best of our knowledge possible. The use of ICT in this survey enabled the government to collect and use information of around 760,000 households, which is like 76% of the total households to be surveyed within just the first 100 days. It enabled the locals to receive grants quickly and maintain transparency between stakeholders. 
The process has reduced the risk of data loss and ensured that earthquake victims rightfully receive their grants. All these were possible due to the use of information technology in survey and data processing. We have come a long way from the initial stage of doubt and skepticism. The question now is how do we sustain and build on the current infrastructures? And how do we infuse technology in not only statistics, but in other areas of national development? This is what Kathmandu Living Labs does. We connect technology to people's everyday lives. There is no meaning to technology if it isn't used or has no impact on people. That's what we believe in and that's what Kathmandu Living Labs works for.